functions across different uh, campaigns, across different channels, and they automate. So uh, you can be leading people from one funnel to another, uh, from one part of the funnel to the next part of the funnel, or you can manage processes and manage data, right? So uh, at the end of the day, it saves you cost uh, because you are supposed to make the system uh, transparent. You're supposed to make the system usable by your team. You're also supposed to use the system uh, uh, um, uh, in a very open way because it draws a lot of data and data is the most expensive thing in the world. So uh, this is just another version. So it depends on what books you read and uh, what articles you read. So so uh, it can be very simple as email marketing or lead generation or managing a campaign or maybe uh, social media scheduling. It can be reporting. It can be as simple as Google Analytics. So um, if you have any uh, experience managing Google Analytics, maybe you can um, type out in the chat box. Uh, uh, do you have experience managing <coughs> Google Analytics? So if you have access to your own company, Google Analytics, please say yes. If not, you can say no. Yes, thank you. Okay, Google Analytics, very important. That is the first step for marketing automation. If you can't see your data, it's very difficult to do anything meaningful. Guys, how does it really work? How does more, um, automation really work? Okay. Yeah, so this is my... Because uh, whenever I do a full screen, it don't it doesn't seem to be showing. So uh, I had to. I am uh, very sorry. I can only show this. So is it okay? Uh, this is as good as a full screen. All right. It's as good as full screen. So is it okay for everyone? It's as good as a full screen. Yeah, I can share the size to you. It's no problem at all. Okay. This is as good as a full screen. All right, so I'll continue. So um, automation can be, it can be in stages. So as I say, marketing automation stops here when you have nothing at all. How do you generate leads, go to a landing page, and how do you make people sign up uh, something? Uh, it, it, they actually go into your mailing list. And how do you keep them warm? For example, you may have a 52 weeks um, cycle of email you may uh, from time to time uh, um, uh, uh, select people who respond to your email to a certain event okay and then you may even uh, do a lead index so all these all the blue ones that's down here is considered marketing automation now the minute when sales happen it is no longer marketing automation it went into uh, um, another crm managed by the sales so you can upsell cross sell or down sell it's really up to you so that technically is nothing to do with marketing automation it is something to do with sales automation already so please bear in mind that this is a these are some of the things that you need to uh, be very clear about right so uh um if you automate the thing if you automate marketing, it's supposed to lead to higher conversion. So I would like now for all of you, maybe you can key in the uh, industry that you're in, okay? And uh, whether you guys are, so what kind of problem that you guys are facing? So I'm going to stop for a while, all right? And ask you, uh, what industry are you in? So, and then you put a bracket, your biggest challenge in marketing. I assume that you are a marketer and that's why you're here. If you're not a marketer, you probably don't understand a lot of things I'm saying. So I'd like to invite every one of you to now key in your industry and the biggest challenges that you have in your marketing. Please start. Okay. Please remember to key in your biggest challenges. Okay. We have one person, Ping, wrote that you're in motor trade. So guys, uh, try to make this interactive. Um, you are here. So I think the best way to benefit from a talk is you let me know something about you so that I can uh, use some of the examples to give you better illustration. If not, it will be uh, very difficult if it's not interactive. All right. Thank you very much. So Joanne, you're in healthcare, how to generate leads. Okay. Okay. Any more? Any more? There are only two person in marketing.
digital payment with a learn more about marketing what marketing team so uh okay ana hita you are into digital payment okay customized photo product mm, okay all right so let me continue um it increases the productivity of the people that means to say when you have automation uh the marketer can actually spend more time on strategy so there are far too often where let's say you want to produce a video all right okay and you are always starting from scratch i can tell you that's going to slow you down and even if you outsource all right you're going to be very expensive so later when you have time i'm going to show you some of these automation tools to help you uh, improve your work a little bit better okay if i have time it be good so please keep your answers coming because i can see it now at times where you automate certain things some of the automation tools actually can give you clarity on the task you know that's you know the worst thing is that sometimes when you collect database and then you don't know what to do in the next step right you collect the leads and then you don't know uh, how do you keep them warm so i think the first thing you need to remember is that you need to think about a content strategy that keeps people interested in what you're doing. Okay. Because today, especially in COVID, there are so many free webinars. There's so many emails that are flying around. It's very hard to uh, get attention from people. So when you have a task, when people sign up for your, sign up for your um, webinar, they are in fact, uh, going into your lead generation. You know. So uh, what's the difference between uh, using Zoom meeting and Zoom webinar? Is that Zoom webinar is for people who do it for the first time and they want to collect database. They want to make sure that people give them what is required, like company, size of company, industry, and so on. Now then, Zoom webinar is better than Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting like now is not effective like I wouldn't know who is inside and uh, honestly, right? Without data, I'm just talking blind, right? That's why I ask for data. The first thing you need to remember as marketer is that what is the data that you need to do your work more effectively? So you need to build a buyer persona. You need to, so a buyer persona, actually, uh, I didn't really cover here, but a buyer persona is really that you do a group profile of who your customers are, what are their biggest pain points, uh, what is their motivation and what are they fearful about? What is the biggest problem? Because we don't profile them and we and we just sit in our office and plan and imagine what they are lacking. So no wonder, right? Your email doesn't touch their heart. Your website don't resonate with them because you don't use words that they, once they read, they will say, ah, that is me, man. I'm having this problem. So the more you do a buyer persona, go and Google it, okay, I will cover it in the course if you come from my course. A buyer persona actually helps you to identify keywords. And when you have keywords, you can do better landing pages, you can do better campaign, and you can do better social media copywriting, you can do better website design, better content creation. Okay, it's so important. So remember, even when it is a feedback form like google form type form it is still automation because it gives you flexibility to collect data the next thing of course is that the more you are able to connect with people the better you build relationship sometimes people don't buy from you immediately sometimes they take a while they want to see what you make out they want to check you out on your facebook page they'll check you out on your linkedin page they want to see your instagram they want to see your video your live video they want to see more webinar people don't always make decision immediately so especially consultancy right it takes a long time so customer uh, customized photo product can be immediate so if i have a friend with birthday and then i want to buy something yeah it can be immediate can be very fast but if you are b2b market then it is longer all right it's really longer so um joanne i don't know which healthcare are you from but uh healthcare is on a need basis it's on a need basis so if i don't need a certain healthcare no matter how much you market to me it's useless what you need what you need to do is to educate me what if i need you now that is the thing you need to answer how can you make people think about one day maybe i need that person so uh at the 
at the top of the funnel, they are all called leads. Leads means they're not even prospect. They are possible prospect that you can start to think about uh, nurturing, but leads are just anyone who is interested to know something about you, okay? Of course, um, when you make money faster, then you can think about more automation. So, so it is not just a privilege for big companies. Uh. Of course, uh, I'm going to show you some names right now. Um, a very, very big company, they use uh, very complicated things like uh, Salesforce, they use things like HubSpot. So if you are a startup or SME, you can use HubSpot, which is a range of automation. And I think uh, if you qualify for some SME grant, you will just pay about 10%. So I encourage you to look at HubSpot, okay? HubSpot, H-U-P-S-P-O-T. HubSpot is a very good full system automation. Some automation are very specific onto certain tasks only. So for example, Hootsuite, Hootsuite, uh, let me just type it out, okay? Hootsuite is actually for social media automation. So let's say you want to uh, forecast all your posts to uh, five different platforms over a month. You can do that, you know? You can actually plan, you can actually uh, pre-schedule, you have all the hashtag, and uh, when time is up, it will be out to the certain platform and you can include other colleagues of yours to contribute the data. And what's good about this is that when you post something on Hootsuite, it automates and then you can do tracking, you can do analytics, you can see how many people actually click on the link that you are sharing. So regardless of where it is, so who is talking about me? Is it coming from uh, Twitter? Is it coming from uh, Instagram? You can actually check. But of course, uh, at the end of the day, uh, that also includes social media monitoring. So social media curation, social media syndication, social media monitoring, social media posting can all be automated under Hootsuite. Now, of course, when you don't have budget, let's say, wow, Hootsuite is very expensive, okay? So the next one I just came here is Buffer. Buffer is smaller, it's not the same thing, but it's uh, costless and of course it's uh, for personal use. So you can start to use some tools that are, are really, really good for you. Buffer is one of them. So uh, I will just move on, right? So a survey is, uh, okay, uh, this kind of survey, you know, uh, somehow we don't really, uh, we can't really believe in the survey so much. They say that uh, the revenue increase, okay, people automate increase 55% 50, versus something else. I'm not sure how true is it, but definitely there'll be an increase, okay? So this is a very important slide, okay, for all of you. So these are the 10 areas of automation, 10 areas. Okay, start from number one, your email marketing. Now, can I ask any one of you, anybody of you use email marketing automation software? And if yes, right, please type out the name of the software that you're using. Is it MailChimp? Is it Constant Contact? Huh? Is it uh, Send in Blue? Does anybody use email marketing software? How do you send out email? Do you use a BCC, just copy and paste all the email, go to BCC and just pass it out, all right? That is not the way, all right? So anybody use email marketing? MailChimp, okay. So MailChimp, uh, later I will show you, I'll go to my account and I'll show you. So MailChimp works this way, you can import all your leads and then it goes into what we call a subscriber, all right? And then you can create email campaign on subscriber. So once you create email campaign, it's automated. You can send out. You can either uh, uh, send out immediately or you can schedule. You can actually go into a, a, a system, a cycle. And every time when you do a campaign, you send out 2,000 emails, let's say, uh, they will start to give you monitoring reports. Okay, how you send out 2,000 uh, on this day, how many people open it, and then... Uh, how many people actually open it and click on the link? They all will tell you. So MailChimp is free. Ah, this one makes me happy. So MailChimp is free uh, as long as your subscriber is less than 2,000 people. Okay. So uh, thanks for sharing. So the next thing is that, um, do you do uh, advertising? Do you have landing pages? How many of you, you do landing pages? 
you do campaign and then it comes to a landing page. So for example, sometimes you watch YouTube, right? And then YouTube, there's always advertisement, somebody trying to sell something or Apple is trying to sell something. You click on it, you go to a page, right? You don't go to the web page. Now it goes to the landing page. Now, anyone use landing page? Okay, so no one use landing page. I'm going to tell you what landing page is. Landing page, it's a page where you convince people to give you data so that you can keep them informed of anything in the future. It is a very specific page. It is no point doing a campaign and then all you do is to lead them to the general page and they don't know what to do with your web with your uh, website. So a landing page is to collect data. Whether you want to collect phone number, you want to collect email, you want to collect any other things, it's okay. But there must be automation, right? So there are software uh, MailChimp also offer landing pages and form. So uh, you get MailChimp to do this function number one and two already, right? Function number three, web, web uh, traffic analytics, it's really about your Google Analytics. So if you don't have Google Analytics, uh, I suggest this, that you go back and check with your company and see if your website, I hope you have a website, all right, who is managing the Google Analytics, it's quite GA for short. And you tell your boss, tell your marketing manager, director that you want to be a user so that they can add you into that GA, your, your, so that you see exactly what is going on in your company website report. Okay. They will tell you things like how many people visit every day and of this, how many people are new, how many repeat, where are they coming from, how long they stay, which page they come in, and then after that, which page they go which page they go out, all these information are all recorded by Google Analytics as long as your website is actually having a UA code, right? So this so much for the web uh, traffic analytics. Now for campaign manager. So uh, how many of you, you do campaign, you actually run a mass campaign from one time to another using email. Can anybody type it up? Anyone? Anyone run campaign? Okay, Singaporean, very funny. Yeah. Give me a minute. Hold on, uh. Okay, I'm gonna off my phone. All right. So, uh, oh, at least, uh, Taufik, you run Facebook campaign and Google Ads, so that's very good. So it goes to a landing page, right? Okay. So that is uh, a type of campaign. Now, the thing here is this: um, if people come, for example, uh, you run Facebook campaign. Uh, what what? So what are you doing? Are you uh, getting people to uh, sign in or are you uh, selling things already when you run campaign? So uh, some of you ask vendor to push out different platform. Now that's the thing. Uh, marketing automation actually enables you to do it in-house. So if you, if you outsource it and this guy is still doing a lot of uh, marketing automation for you, then I think you got to re, uh, re you got to rethink your outsourcing strategy, okay? Because it's very very dangerous. I give an example. Today, a lot of listed company uh they cannot meet, but they still have to have AGM. So they are hiring a lot of audit firm to manage their RSVP for their webinar AGM. That is very dangerous because every one of your customer or prospect or shareholder details are going into that vendor. So the vendor can sign any NDA with you, you know, no problem can sign, but it's no guarantee that they won't use the information. So while you outsource, you also have to really read things carefully, right? Uh, can you trust the vendor hundred uh, percent? Yesterday or two days ago, I just have a friend who told me that the vendor who, who managed their email blast, right? Mix up their email. They have a, they are, they are into channel sales, you know, uh, 
they have two email one is to end user one is to channel partner and the one to end user is without the pricing for re for reseller price and the one that to a reseller has a price and the end user price and they got mixed up you know they, you know they send the channel pricing to the end user and then you know what is disaster because throughout the week they are have to answer to all the customer how come there's so much difference between a reseller price and end user price so i'm not saying that outsourcing the vendor is always uh, the best thing to do because you have to make sure that they really know your business all right don't outsource to them too much without you not knowing what is going on because a lot of marketer today they're not doing marketing uh, they are coordinating so you got to know marketing and i hope that's why you're here all right so lead an uh, event manager how many of you you do online events okay how many of you do online event? You conduct webinar like this. You know, you use Zoom, you use Webex, you use Eventbrite, you use Pitik. All this to automate your marketing automation. Anyone? Anybody do event? Yes? No? Guys, anybody do online event now? Okay, webinar. So uh, I, I'm sure you use Zoom. Now, so if you want something that uh, creates your event and quickly take whatever database you have, broadcast it, monitor the, the, the sign up from everywhere and even your reseller, you know, you give them affiliate code, you can monitor them and you can give them reminders. And when they are here, you can check in. And after the, the event is over, you can do survey. Now, all these things it can be done, all right, by Eventbrite. Eventbrite. So I'm going to key in here, Eventbrite, or you can use Patek. These two are very good, are very powerful online management tool. Uh, the reason why you should use it is that when you automate your event management, including uh, payment, uh, you can key in your PayPal and uh, you can have early bird price. You can have super early bird price, you can have normal price. When the time is up, they will change your pricing. So they automate everything for you. Now, in the past, Eventbrite was the star, but now I think Pitik is a star. Pitik allows you to create a page where uh, people follow you once they follow you. Once you have an event, you don't even need to send out the invite, you know? they get a prompt. All right. And then another reason why you put your event on the Eventbrite, Pitik is that Pitik and even bright actually cross sell your events to other people who register for other events okay so webinar if you use zoom it's just to automate the rstv part but you still have to invite people to sign up and a webinar uh, zoom don't have really the function to send out email to your database uh, i think there's a function where you import everything and then you make them uh, sign up uh, 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 conditionally but uh, i don't call that automation however uh, webinar does have the automation to give reports of people when people lock on when people sign in sign out so that is another type of, of, of automation it depends on your requirement guys so no one software it can do everything all right so you got to make sure that uh you 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 know what you're doing and select the best so number six, digital asset management. How many of you, you invest, you actually buy stock library images and pictures? Anyone? So I'm going to uh, suggest this. Okay, this is a very good site for all sorts of video images, line art, uh, video template, animation, skeleton, there's so many, and even WordPress a theme, and all this is just for two hundred US dollars. Okay, and uh, it basically have everything. So if you're looking for a place that you don't have to think at all, you just key in any keywords, and it will surface all the different types of uh, creative assets for you to choose. Then Envodo is something that you might want to look at. Okay, Envodo is very powerful. It has a lot of things. Uh, I pay for it. I just renew it. All right, I took all the images from there. And uh, you just need to key in when you download certain things, you just have to tell them what project are you working on so that you don't get into trouble. All right, and it's really amazing. Okay, all right. Anybody use that before? You can uh, put down yes or no here. 
So number seven, uh, web content management. Now, how many of you you have experience using? Uh, you are you are managing your web CMS now. You are the you are the one that is coding your website now. Anyone? Yes or no? Anyone doing your? Okay, so you can the so the most popular one is WordPress right uh but wordpress uh, to a lot of people are very complicated so uh you you have a lot of plugin and uh, it's not say so easy you know you you literally need to do some programming to get it done of course the uh, if there are a lot of new players so uh they uh some people like Wix. you know there are many many new players now that has fantastic templates now the challenge is this uh um a lot of automation now also allows you right to do web pages so if your web pages are not very very complicated then you can use very simple ones to do it if your stuff is very complicated then i think uh uh you might want to use hubspot okay to to actually do it so it depends on you. So how many of you, you are thinking about creating uh, something like a social networking portal like Facebook, okay? Where people sign by cow, they have a profile, they can interact with each other, they can set up their own group, they can do PM. So you may want to look at social engine, socialengine.net. Socialengine.net is another automation but you can create a Facebook environment uh, very fast. Okay, you can create, uh, uh, and it's a one-time payment, you, you can install it onto your dedicated server or, or, or uh, maybe a VPN or VPS, right? You can set up something very fast and can help you to automate a lot of things. So you don't need to learn programming, you just need to uh, tell them what profile you want and how should they interact with each other, what can they do, and so on. So again, it can automate the setting up of a social network, uh, even an intranet, for example, it'll be fun, right? It can set up intranet very easily. So uh, so all the staff, maybe 50, 100, 200 of you can interact, each have a profile, and then you can talk a bit of work there, you know, you can, uh, you can tease each other, you can post a lot of the things that, it is like a, you can use it as an in-house social media, or on external lead generator. So I'll give an example. If you are into resale car, then it's, uh, it's good to create an environment where people can buy and sell car, can come together. If you are a wine importer, you may want to create a wine lovers club so that anybody want to drink wine can come together. So uh, socialengine.net actually can do all these things for you, right? Um, yeah. So of course, uh, that uh, there are a lot of uh, more complicated like Joomla, you know, uh, that's for enterprise version, the more complicated ones that you that you may want to use. So that is another term, automation. So social media marketing, now there is a very big one. So social media, some of the platform, they have the in-house, in-platform in automation. So for example, right, Twitter, how many of you, you have Twitter? So uh, if you want to automate your tweets, okay, you just need to go to tweetdeck.twitter.com, right? It, it helps you to schedule your tweet and it helps you to monitor certain keywords, certain hashtag. Uh, so they will let you create different columns and you can monitor different things. And you can schedule your tweet, you know, uh, forever, okay? Uh, so that's awesome. Or you want to follow someone, you want to know exactly what this guy is doing. So you just need to set up something on TweetDeck and and you can automate. So another one I just told you is so sweet. All right, they can do a lot of things. Facebook themselves, you can schedule as well. And uh, if you do Zoom webinar now, you can also stream to Facebook. And uh, they give a choice, right? Uh, um, you stream on Facebook, if the page they give you a live producer, you can choose different pages and you can stream to different places. Now, don't ever use that. Live producer on Facebook doesn't work. It's still it's still a uh, dot stable, so don't need to use it. Now, how many of you you actually uh, do a lot of uh, Facebook Live? Anyone? Facebook Live? 
Anybody do Facebook Live? No one? Okay, so next time you want to do Facebook Live and you don't want the ordinary Facebook Live, you want to do it like a production where you have a logo, you have sticker running across, you can bring in the some of the comments onto the screen itself. It's like a CNN show, you know, and then you can stream in video and then you can uh, remove the video, you can overlay and so on. StreamYard is something that you can look at. Uh, the free version allows you to stream for four hours. All right, of course, uh, there'll be a more watermark for StreamYard there. But you will pay $20 per month. Uh, like me, you will be able to stream for six hours, no logo, and then you can do anything you want. You can stream to two places, so you can stream to Facebook, stream to YouTube and LinkedIn separately. Uh, by the way, if you want to be a content creator on LinkedIn, and you want to do live streaming, you have to apply for it. I just applied, but I'm still waiting for the result. So if you are doing a lot of free, sorry, um, uh, Facebook Live, then do StreamYard. Right? StreamYard uh, can really make it into a show. Lah. So if you just do <coughs> normal Facebook Live, it's kind of boring. Okay. Another one that you can consider is what I call the live reacting. Okay, live reacting is actually even more powerful than StreamYard. Live reacting has a lot of user engagement uh, technology inside. So for example, uh, before you start Facebook Live, you have countdown and they can have all sorts of countdown. They have all sorts of interactive games, you know, uh, to play with. You can do a, you can do a game show, a kind of multiple choice bowling, and it's all automated, you know. And then uh, you can engage with, with the kind of people. So uh, the, my favorite one in uh, live reacting is this, um, uh, the last man standing. The last man standing is actually a system within live reacting where, let's say you do a promo. And your promo says the anybody's comment will stay for 20 seconds without another comment. All right, that means the last comment is, is able to stay for 20 seconds. We'll win something. Okay, and it is live. So what do you think people will do when they see this? Let's say you want to win a holiday, right? The last man who have the comment stay for 20 seconds will win it. Everybody will comment. So when everybody comment, more and more people get to know your life and no one know when you're going to stop. Everybody will start to comment. The more comments you have, the more interesting your live stream is. Okay. And the best thing is that if really until the end, someone actually stays up, the comment stays up for 20 seconds, the name, the Facebook profile, the picture, and the name will be on the screen and the Facebook live will end there. Now, how is that for marketing? Interesting, right? So if you want to collect leads, so sometimes you go back to the comments and look at who commented it. <clears throat> so guys, marketing, right? It's a lot of creativity. So if you don't understand the basis of marketing, then automation can't really help you. So you must be effective in your marketing then you go to automation because automation only helps you in the efficiency part of it. So I hope you are clear that marketing automation won't help you to do better marketing. It just make you more efficient. It won't make you more effective if you don't really know marketing in the first place. Okay. So behavior tracking, it's a very, very uh, sticky, uh, very hard to measure behavior change, right? So uh, the I suggest you go to this site called Think with Google. Think with Google is actually a site where they keep the best practices of what works and what doesn't work. Okay, so if let's say you put up advertising uh, on on YouTube, and you and is able to show you all the best ones in the past years by different country. So it's quite awesome, right? It's quite awesome that uh, that that uh, they can share to you some of their findings. And I think that will be great. So if you want to learn about uh, measuring behavior and some of the customer barometer down there, I think Google has many links so you can explore some of the system they have for behavior tracking. Okay, 
So uh, number 10, revenue analytics really is break down your money to see which of the services give you the most money. Is it A, B or C? And how many percentage of the contribution are they having? So sometimes <clears throat> you have to think, even when you have done sales, don't be so happy. You have to think further and ask yourself, um, those people who buy certain things, can we can we make them an advocate? Can we upsell them something else? Uh, when some when someone buy A, do they also buy B? If they buy B, how long after they buy A before they buy B? These are the things that you should be looking out for to really look into a sale, especially in a time like this. Okay, so uh, I hope I have uh, addressed that. All right, now I may not want to go into best practices. Can I now uh, show you some of the automation that I found in the marketplace? All right, so uh, I must get five years. So can I stop my presentation? You're going to get a site anyway. And can I now show you, uh, I want to show you a few things. Number one, I'm going to show you how you can do video very fast with a simple script. Okay, if you want to know a automation video creator that can just create video of different format very fast, you can even change the format. Just by writing a short script, you can generate video for you. If you want to see this demo, I must see five years. Only one, two, three, four, or uh, four only. Okay, good. So while you're listening to me, you can actually go and try. I want to showcase one. Give me a minute. I'm going to uh, bring up the screen right now. Okay, I'm going to showcase, hold on. Eh? Okay, so I'm going to showcase Lumen 5. Lumen 5. Lumen 5, and I'm going to type it out here so that you can go and take a look at it. Lumen 5 is the AI generator for video. Uh, this is a very powerful system where you don't have to crack your head to think about well, what footages to do. So I'm going to show you what I did uh, as demo. So let's say I want to create a simple video talk about personal uh, budgeting tips. So I have I have prepared a script, a very simple script. All right, a very simple script of and then uh, this thing is only about like uh, 30 seconds cut kind of video because and i want to do it on instagram so i choose a format okay you see i can choose many many different formats. can you see i can choose a uh, news feed i can choose carousel at kind of uh of a uh, format i can do stories i can do the skinny long one you know i can do instagram uh a uh, long one long uh, skinny ones and then of course square one i can do twitter i can also do snapchat so I choose, so what happened was that I actually write this script and I just dump it here. And, and then I'm going to show you the video. This is without me editing. Uh, this is what they give me from the script. And they go into their AI system and find out uh, a very good and accurate video footage clip for me. So I'm going to show you this. Oops. Wait, you guys cannot hear the music. One more point. Okay, I hope you guys see it. Uh, that video, I did not even edit. I just simply type my notes and I put it in and then they find for me. So uh, I'm going to show you another example, okay? 
I'm going to show you uh, an advertisement I did for my client called Swahili Valley Stream. And this is what I have done. Again, <clears throat> I'm going to show you the script that I have done. This is the script. Okay. This is, the, this is to generate leads for people who wants to learn how to play violin. Right. And I did a video. Okay. To be put on Facebook as an advertisement. But this is how I automate it. So this is how it, it, it look. It, this is how it looks like. Okay, it's awesome. I didn't even, I didn't even uh, do a lot of amendments. I upload some of the things I want and then the rest they handle it. Okay, guys, this is Lumen 5. It's purely AI generated by machine learning. So you can sign up a free account and try to automate your video creation. So let's say, right, I did this for YouTube and suddenly discover, Alama, I want to do it for Instagram, so square one. So I just simply change the format. Okay, look, uh, when I change the format, I say I want square. Can you see that it is all changed? All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this immediately with this new format. Just now was flat, right? Okay, so now let's look at it. Okay, you got the idea. Huh? So guys, any question to ask me about Lumen 5? It's a very, I want to showcase very simple things that you can do to start automating simple small processes. And you can, uh, you can do many, many different posting for social media. You can send your WhatsApp, you know, you can do your campaign. Yeah, you can do your ads. So with Lumen 5, you make your message stick better with the client. Okay, anybody got any question to ask me about Lumen 5? It's a very useful tool, very easy to use. It's free. So when you're free, of course, you got to live with the uh, the last part, right? They will always say, oh, video make from Lumen 5. Uh, in the preview here, you see all the so, all the uh, watermark, right? But once uh, but once you export it onto uh, MP4, the watermark disappeared. All right? So you don't have to worry. Once you export it out as an MP4, they all disappear even for free version is not there right okay so the next thing i want to show you is just now i told you all that uh, you can automate a facebook uh a facebook live so what is the typical thing about facebook live so i so i was still so this stream yard i have my account okay so so uh, StreamYard looks like this. So StreamYard enables you to stream to different places. So you, you can key out the destination. So uh, this is my name. I actually have a lot of uh, different pages and posts I want to actually uh, stream to. So you can add in as many destinations as you can. But you can only stream to two places or five places depending on what is the plan that you buy. Okay. Of course, the free one can only stream to one place. And then I can now start to create a podcast. Right. Once I create a podcast, I I will ask uh, where I want to do it. So let's say I want to do it on my page. All right. And I key my title, my first test, or whatever it is. Okay. Then can you see whatever there? Then can you see the description here? Now this is actually my post, you know. So if I key my post and I create podcast, you know what? This becomes a post on my page. 
to tell people when is my podcast. So if I schedule it uh, tomorrow evening 9 p.m., the post will be Angel Chow plans to go live on 11th of June, 9 p.m., right? And uh, when it comes on, you are able to do a lot of uh, a lot of different things. So um, uh, play with it. Uh, it's very awesome. Okay. Uh, it actually, um, let me see uh, whether I can find a link for you to uh, enjoy. Okay. So give me a minute. Uh. Okay. Give me a minute. So let me give you a link for you guys to go in and see what really uh how does StreamYard works give me a minute so let me uh give it a link right now for you to go and see give me 30 seconds okay Ah, okay, I got it. So, if you want to see how a StreamYard manage the Facebook Live, and this is the link. Uh, I I am one of them. Uh, there are eleven speakers, each one twenty minutes, each one seven minutes. So I was the one behind the scene doing all the Facebook Live preparation, all the management of stickers, banners, running messages. Uh, uh, showing uh, who is coming up and who is going off uh, and I put the best comment on top. So this is a link you can straight away go and sign in and watch this webinar. Uh, but this is actually a Facebook Live. Alright, it's, it's now the video becomes a webinar only. But in actual fact, this is what Facebook Live can do. Alright, you can do as a show. If, but if you just do Facebook Live using Facebook, it's not so interesting. A lot of function you cannot do. All right, StreamYard actually make a life easier, right, guys? So, uh, now I have seven minutes more. I want to uh, have some Q and A. Is anybody who want to ask me something? Anybody here use LinkedIn often? Anybody here use LinkedIn often? Okay, so for those of you who use LinkedIn often, I'm going to key in something here. And I hope that you can go and find out something about your LinkedIn. Wait, give me a minute. So let me key in something here. Now, this link that I just given you, this is to find out your social selling index score. Now, I said before, right? If you want to improve on something, first you must get the data to see where you have gone wrong. Then you know where to improve, right? So even if a doctor tell you, yeah, you're sick, you know, huh? but they don't have x-ray to tell you what's the problem. Would you take the advice? No, because there's no x-ray. So this is an x-ray for your LinkedIn account. In, so inside, they actually give you uh, a glimpse of how LinkedIn view your account. So you've got four colors, right? You've got orange, uh, professional. And then you've got this uh, purple bar, which is uh, finding the right people. And then the red one is uh, engagement. That means whether you post a lot or not. Then the, the green one where it is about your relationship. You know, do you participate in comments? Do you join groups and so on? So LinkedIn give you a score. All right. And I think that actually is an automation for you to window dress your LinkedIn account. So all of you, if you're professional, you better have a LinkedIn account. If you have a LinkedIn account, okay, I will answer your question a little bit later. Okay. Um, so I just want to talk about LinkedIn. So when you find out what's wrong with your LinkedIn and you address those issues highlighted by the index, then you can more effective. All right, you can even, LinkedIn is very powerful. You, know? you can even create events and invite people inside if you know how to do it. So uh, the more prominent you are, the better you can connect with people and uh, your connections will grow. The whole problem is that we marketers, we forget to market ourselves. Sometimes like, when uh, people go to a LinkedIn account, your LinkedIn account is go song, nothing. Only your name and your company and don't even know what you're doing. It's only your job title. 
it is very shameful for a marketer not being able to market yourself. So the wonder, right? On LinkedIn, when people find you, they look at your profile, they, they thought you're a scammer because you've got nothing inside your LinkedIn account. That's why they don't do business with you. You cannot find sponsor, you cannot find partner and your events, you cannot fill out uh, your webinars because no one trusts you. So personal branding is important. Before you think about automation, personal branding is important. So every time you have a question, what is the marketing automation for number 10 revenue analytics? You have to you have to be uh you need to have a very big system like Salesforce. So Salesforce, I'm gonna key in here. Okay, and how spot? So uh for example. Let's say you're on a project and your project is nine months, right, to finish. But and you charge your client one hundred thousand. But you know what? Ten colleagues are involved. Now you tell me, what is the revenue analytics? Is it productive? Nine months, you make hundred thousand. Okay, you earn hundred thousand. So one month is how much? Maybe about eleven. Okay, maybe eleven thousand, right? But you got ten colleagues on this job. So your colleague, everyone per month, okay, his contribution to that is actually $1,000. But he's only in charge of two projects and he's paid 3000 Can you imagine? His pay is 3000 and yet every month he's only contributing $2,000 of revenue. Do you think your company is making money or losing money? Okay, can, can someone type here? Based on my example just now, do you think the company is losing money or making money? Losing money, of course, because it can't even cover the salary. Now, that is the thing. When you, when you measure business coming in, divide by the time spent, and the manpower you devote onto that project, you now know that you either have to shorten the delivery time to six months or to charge more money or to devote less manpower. Now that is what automation and analytics can do for you, my friend. You need to learn how to do budgeting and you need to learn how to do win-lose. Okay, you need to learn scoring. You, you need to be more productive. So automation at the end is to help you to be more effective and efficient, but it also give you more data. So if you don't read the data and modify the way you work, then automation is just another piece of good thing to have, but it doesn't help your bottom line. So I hope today's talk enlighten you on marketing automation. It can be very simple as doing video to as complicated as analyzing your revenue. So sometimes why uh, the more you do, right, the less money you make. That is why, uh, maybe because the project cycle is too long. Maybe because you devote too many manpower. Or maybe it's because you didn't charge enough money. So when you calculate your manpower cost and your resource cost, then you know how to charge and how to code for certain projects, right? So to end off, I hope all of you enjoy today and uh, uh, please stay in touch with Adventist and uh, we have two calls that is coming up. So I'm going to open up uh, that document. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with all of you. This is a document that the school wants me to share with you. All right. Okay, we have, uh, yeah, we have upcoming course. So if you want to take a course, of course, uh, you can scan the QR code. But you will think that this talk is good enough, then you'll be okay. All right, so uh, I will leave this screen here. And uh, that's all for me for now. Okay, see you guys the next time. Thank you very much. So I hand back, uh, the time back to the uh, course coordinator, Abigail. Thank you. So uh, 
please put some comment on what you find uh how you find this talk does it help you you know uh, what can be improved i think uh that will be good and helpful to me thank you very much for all your good comments okay i hope you use lumen 5 i hope you give uh stream yard some some try this a simple one start from something simple don't don't go and try something complicated start from simple all the way up to very complicated then you will be able to appreciate the efficiency that is given to you if you start with something very high level right wow then you, you have a lot of things to learn okay the, the problem with now is that there are too too many things to learn and people cannot catch up and when they cannot catch up they outsource then when you outsource you learn even less you know why the professional are doing it for you and you end up not doing marketing you know you end up doing a coordination and then your boss uh, don't find the value in you then your boss will load you more and more things because you're not doing a lot of things you're just coordinating all the vendors using all this automation then there's no point right personal branding is very important so guys don't ever go through motion make sure that you really know something before you decide to outsource it all okay that's all for me thank you very much if you want to follow me on linkedin just key in andrew chow csp you will find me please connect with me and uh hope to see you in my course maybe sometime in the future okay bye bye